In 2021, I recorded a video answering the question of a client of mine, is everything really happening for a good reason? In today's video, I'm going to give you two total opposite experiences, which both had major impacts on my life. One, which generally labeled as positive, but for some people also labeled as negative, actually. So let's say it's a 70-30. 70% positive, 30% people labeled negative. And the other one is by 99% of the people labeled negative, by 1% labeled positive. And hopefully these examples will show you, and by my explanation will understand how really everything is happening for a good reason, but it may take you some time and some work to learn to see what the good thing is in it for you. So let's dive into this. Like, subscribe, and share. Hi, my name is Latvim Rad. And today I'm gonna give you a new perspective on the subject of everything is happening for a good reason. Everything. I know, it's a bold statement, but here it comes. We think we know how we want our lives to go. We think that we know how things should be going. Hell, we even think that we know what's wrong with nature and we're going to fix it. But then, years or decades later, we see that we really fucked up, big time. So why would it be any different with our own lives? Ah, it's a smaller scale, you may say. It's exactly the same. If you're watching this video, then you probably believe in the concept that we have a soul. So if we have a soul, and if you're watching this video, then clearly you did not master yet for 100% the communication with your soul. Otherwise, you wouldn't need to watch any video on personal development because you would just be guided by your soul 24-7. You wouldn't need any external input and ideas your soul would guide you, would give you the insights you need, would give you the knowledge you need, would give you direction whenever you need it. But not many people are at that level, if even any. So not knowing exactly what our soul wants, especially not for the long term, means that we do not really know what's good and what's not good for us. Not up here. We may feel it here, but that's our soul speaking through our body. When you feel that contraction, like, oh, that means not good for you. You feel like, ah, it means, yeah, give me more. Not per se more, but you know what I mean. So I decided to record this video and you probably saw already the video before where I talk about intimacy. And if not, you will see up here a thumbnail and a, a link. I touched for a second on the subject of when everything is in flow, things just happen and then Oops, pregnancy may occur. This was one of my biggest fears. Most of my adult life. So I was being creative to avoid the oops pregnancy thing. 
And why was that? Well, I'm happy you're asking. Because I didn't feel safe during my youth. I didn't even feel safe during most of my adult life. But mainly my youth as a child I have my own hashtag me too story and I almost had to apparently. This I heard when I told my father about what had happened to me at the age of seven and he told me that he actually had prevented this happening at the age of eight, nine. So, and we both hadn't talked about this until 2012. So that created a wound in me. And even if in 2012 I started healing the wound of, of, of sexual assault and things like that, and my whole sexuality, which took another seven, eight years, more. And probably I'm still healing certain parts, but I may not be aware of what is still there to heal. So it's, it's a journey, it's a process. So I unconsciously and consciously took that decision. So consciously it wasn't, wasn't looking around like, yeah, do I really want to put a child in this shitty world with all the crap that's happening? Especially when I was still watching the news. It was bad things everywhere. And unconsciously, so my subconscious was like, it's not safe. You cannot guarantee the safety of your child in this world. Somebody may do something nasty to your child. And you will never forget yourself, forgive yourself for not having prevented it. So that was at play, a wound. But then, about two, two and a half years ago, poof, my girlfriend got pregnant. And she even had a menstruation and morning after, let's say, there were two tsunamis in her belly. And we didn't know at the time, but looking back, calculating that we knew what had happened. But little one was there. He dug in, he survived two whole tsunamis. Probably he built the Ark of Noah. I don't know what he did. And he came. Of course, certain fears went through my mind at the beginning. But then things started to calm down and I started to look forward to things, even if I had no clue what it would mean in, in practice. And long story short, there's just a few details here and there. The morning he was born, I cried all morning. I was not allowed to be, the rules of the hospital was not allowed to be there, so I was in bed. My girlfriend gave me a call and said, congratulations. I mean, he came so much earlier than we thought. He was also two weeks early, but also came like after just a few contractions. And I just cried all morning. I had an explosion of unconditional love that had happened in me. And that love has been flowing since that moment. I didn't like little children before because I could not communicate with them and they would just be bothering me. Well, he's one and three months and 
we did find our way to communicate. When he smiles at me, my day is... Whatever happened before is gone and my day is good. And my new perspective on things is I get to raise a boy to become a man, a real man. Thanks to all the experiences I've had, the good and the ugly. And I will make sure he will be a healthy man, a real man. Not an arrogant bastard, not um, this toxic guy, kind of man, these uh, uh, macho guys or one of those weak ones who doesn't know how to be a man who cannot stand in his masculine energy. No, I will teach him how to be strong, but also loving and compassionate at the same time, how to be respectful how to listen to his inner voice, how to act from there, how to also listen to the people and read the people in front of him. Things I didn't learn until only recently. So my whole perspective changed. And today I'm grateful. Yes, sometimes I still have little worries about certain things. But that's old stories, old memories that come up and that need to be transformed. But I'm not raising him overprotectively. I'm teaching him boundaries. If he drops and he didn't fall on his head, like that, nothing happened. Just get up by yourself. Of course, I was scared the first times that he fell, especially he was moving and not paying attention, sliding off whatever he was sitting on, boom, hitting his head many times, sometimes twice or three times a day. But then he also learned from his mistakes, he started to pay more attention. Okay, recently it happened again a few times. Luckily, it generally happens in the living room or the bedroom where the floor is wooden. Not in the kitchen where the floor is granite. Granite. Granite, granite, whatever. Hard stone floor. So, I do get to be the ultimate teacher. Because in 2007, I decided to start teaching, to start sharing what I've learned because I saw the enormous value in what I had learned and how it transformed my life. So I started to share with people. And in 2017, if I'm right, 17 or 18, I started recording videos to share with more people. But these are people who come on my path and go, But I experienced myself a mentorship for 10 years, my dear friend Harvey, who taught me a lot of valuable lessons, shared a lot of very beautiful, sometimes tough, but very teachful experiences of his. And now I get to do that, a full life or a full youth. That's amazing. And I'm learning a lot in the process. And it happened now because finally now I reached a point where I got enough inner peace and mastered enough the techniques to ground, to go back inside, not to reach those stress levels that I used to reach before. Because having a little child around you, having a lack of silence around you. I mean, to record this video, my girlfriend had to go to the bedroom with him, finally falling asleep. 
and our daughter had to go, I mean her daughter, but I call her how our daughter, went to the kitchen just to give me a moment of silence. I need a lot of coordination to be able to sit in silence, to have a session with someone or to record a video. Back in the days that would have really made me angry. But I reached that level. Because back in 2000, I think it was 2010 or 12, I mentioned to me, oh, Lotfi, you will never have children, don't worry. You will not have children, you will not be able to handle that, that change in your life anyway. Well, he was wrong. But it took <laughs> another 13 years or so before it happened. So at that time, he was right. But then when predicting the future, you predict a future, a possible future, possible version of the future. But there's so many factors, so many things happening that anything can happen. And I believe that this is one of the biggest things that you can call impactful. To say that everything happens for a good reason. But I'll give you another example. The total opposite of this. The day after I turned 24, my mother died. Out of the blue. It set me free. Why? Two years before my birth, my sister was born. She died within three days. She got some lung infection. Healthcare back then and where my parents were was crap. And there was nothing they could do. It was a whole accumulation of circumstances that caused her to die. I don't know how people survive the death of a child. I really don't know. My parents did. Till the day of today, my father is not speaking about it. If there is something touching it, he'll just mention it as a thing that happened over there. But he never shared how it made him feel. He told the story and he said what he had done. But nothing from here. The same with my mother. But the wound resulted in, especially my mom, but also my father, be very protective of me. Even after leaving home, moving to another country 2000 kilometers away, I don't know how much that is in miles. Go Google it. My mom was still trying to control my life, to control what I was doing, the big decisions I was taking, and was suffocating me. When she died, I did not know that at the time, but looking back, I started to see how it helped me develop myself, starting to discover who I am, starting to have life experiences, taking decisions on my own, making my own mistakes, and it was for the better. So, if you have things happening to you and you're really upset about them, 
take a moment to take a step back to take some deep breaths and I have a video on how taking three depth, deep breaths transformed my life and you will see up here a link and maybe a thumbnail so you recognize it take those deep breaths take a step back and look put the question why is this happening not, not just why like a judgment but how is this serving me in the long term how is this a good thing in the end even if it feels shitty today because change is happening and we don't like change at least not in all areas and if this is really difficult for you to do then contact me because I do guide people in this process and teach them how to learn to do this how to practice this and eventually make it go faster some things like the death of my mom the impact years I think even a decade or maybe even two decades no not two decades but a decade I say a decade before I realized that it actually set me free so the positive from it of course shortly after her death it was like she didn't suffer like other people because she had cancer but she didn't suffer from it. it just she got sick she didn't know and then at a certain moment really things got bad boom she died so she was only for two days in the hospital amazing right people love to die in their sleep even better of course for the outside world like <gasps> what, what happened yeah I'm smiling because the day before her funeral was her birthday and people did not know yet and not everyone knew so some people were calling to congratulate her and yeah yeah I still remember that first conversation I had like oh yeah mom is dead just came out like that and I was like oh shit that's not how you say it and I was was like oh please let don't don't make me hear boom on the other side that that person would faint and hit his head on the table or whatever it happened only once because that person immediately started spreading within their network the, the, the great news but for me it went from a decade to a year to months to weeks to days to hours to minutes sometimes seconds depending on the impact it can still take up to days or weeks it's like a real big change in my life but it's not years or decades anymore even months because I'm really open and I'm trained to see the possibilities and I can train you to also do that which means you will spend much less time regretting things being angry and frustrated about things as soon as you see a new opportunity you start going again with joy so feel free to contact me so that I can help you too get to this level of taking the lead in your life I would say stepping into the driver's seat not being afraid of what you're gonna hit I hope you enjoyed this video and looking forward to see you in the next one. Like, subscribe and share.